Hi there everybody, Peter of England uh, here again, um, coming to you from Germany on a, a snowy Tuesday afternoon. Um, what I'm going to do now over the next 10 minutes or so is to give you uh, a briefing of what I think are lessons learned from the Crown Court case which passed uh, by on uh, Friday the 8th in Chelmsford. Uh, I have made quite detailed preparation for the case uh, since around about June the 5th uh, of last year, 2012, I've been working on this case. I had prepared affidavits, I had given notice of understanding of claim of right to the Crown, to the Attorney General, to the Crown Prosecution. I notified the judge in the Crown Court that I'd also notified um, 26 of the 44 constabularies of the United Kingdom uh, that I would be driving my vehicle through their territories. I notified the Association of Chief of Police Officers. I basically did everything honourably and above board, transparently, so that everyone would know what my intentions were and what I intended to do. At no time did I receive a reply. This tells you something in and of itself. Even the Ministerial Correspondence Unit would not even acknowledge a question sent by recorded delivery that they had processed the document or handed the affidavits to um, the then Lord High Chancellor um, Kenneth Clark. So this actually tells you something, that if the Crown or the State refuses to communicate with something that is obviously real, and sending the letter and the affidavit, then what is it refusing to communicate with? So in effect, by that which you are not, are you now being defined? Most government bodies, most um, uh, quangos and most um, government-run departments or city councils uh, will state quite openly in their charter for their corporations now that they deem it necessary to reply to your inquiry or your complaint within 10 working days and then if the complaint is unsatisfied, uh, sorry, if it's uh, an unsatisfactory answer, you have a right to appeal to an ombudsman, etc. So, that's if you're one category. But if you decide that you're something slightly different and the government therefore then refuse to even acknowledge a communication, what is that telling you of the state, of the country, and the government, and the world political model? Because, make no mistake, the world political model is exactly the same as the UK political model, the Canada, UK, uh, sorry, the Canada Commonwealth model, and that of the United States and anywhere else. So, there's something very sinister in the process. We all know that there's something wrong. Now, Getting to the court case itself, I think in a way I probably naively assumed that due to the amount of work I'd done, due to the fact that I, at my expense, twice turned up in court when I know that the Crown Prosecution System, uh, sis, uh, the Crown yeah, sorry, the Crown Prosecution and the judge both believed that I wouldn't attend court. So what we must also recall here that it was me that forced the issue into the court. The original judge, John Woolard, believed that I wouldn't appear. They also then, probably hoping this case would go away, up until, as of now, they didn't send any communication whatsoever to the given address that I provided them with. They didn't notify me at all under any name as to what had proceeded or come out of the 10th of October 2012 uh, initial trial, when I was found guilty in absentia. So, that also tells you something. So, I prosh, pushed up the ante, and then we went to this Crown Court appeal, which, again, was just nothing more than a magistrate's court. I actually fully believed that there would be a judge somewhere that might say, at least to the Crown Prosecution or the police, if you're going to proceed with these cases, at least get their names right. Or, if you're going to do this, enter into someone's private residence, 
at least have documents that will allow you, maybe a warrant previously issued, to gain entry and access. Um, if you're going to do this, then maybe it's as well that you factually check the documentary evidence before you put it into the court. Um, they did none of this. They made many mistakes. In a normal situation, a fairly competent barrister or lawyer would have had these charges dismissed. Maybe the insurance one, not, but the others, for sure. Because there were many holes in it and there were lots of procedural errors made on behalf of the Crown. So, we see that once we're into these areas now, we have less, we have no rights at all. They're basically proceeding against you under any pretext they want and just stating this is what's going to happen. It doesn't matter what you say or do if you're in the court before them. So, what I see is it's a necessity to, to counteract this ab initio right at the start. Probably the first area is, I would say, and I agree with, with many free men, don't go to the court. If you do choose to, or you end up in the court, though, and I think there is, there's got to be victories in the court, otherwise the movement's never going to go anywhere, we need to derail the judge. Because the judge is the individual that sits initially in the magistrate's court as both trier of fact and law. There are several questions. I've put together five that can be addressed to the judge that if he refuses to answer them, or he becomes aggressive, surly, or downright threatening to you, are adequate grounds for showing that there is a prejudicial system against you, that it is an unfair and impartial tribunal that you're in front of, and it's more than adequate grounds for having it dismissed. There are other uh, questions that I'm going to phrase for you that need to be addressed to the judges, and this is where I think this movement needs to go. If you're appearing or choose to appear, then we need to go up against the judges and get them placed on a tilt footing or derailed. Without the judges, they can't move forward. Um, just quickly looking at the notes here, uh, the case itself was 100% proof that they will bully, they will intimidate, they will falsify whatever they need to do and selectively conclude whatever they need to do to ensure that your arguments or your, um, your points of view uh, are not considered or marginalised to the extreme. There was no indication at all that I had a right to natural justice, to any uh, prerogative under common law. Uh, it's as if that I, they were just processing a, a ghost or someone on the way to Auschwitz, Dachau or Guantanamo. The other thing that I would like to bring to your attention also is that what we're dealing here uh, with is a, a crime syndicate. A tyrannous, usurious crime syndicate run by corporate UK PLC with a judiciary, a parliament at Westminster and an executive with a police force backup which will maintain the status quo at all costs. And so don't forget that the individual presiding over you in these courts, the judge, the magistrate um, or whoever that whoever else it would be, is fully supportive of the status quo as it is in this country, in the United Kingdom, uh, now. And that status quo gives you Iraq, it gives you war in Afghanistan, it gives you regime change in Libya, Syria, a potential war in the Middle East with Iran. It's given you nothing but war in the past and there's more war on the door. This is what this government, or all previous governments, have scheduled for you. Higher taxation, less free time, more uh, violations of your, your natural rights and your birth rights, more surveillance, more control, more barcoding, more RFID chips scheduled for you in the future, checks taken away from you, uh, banking checks, uh, cashless society. 
So it's becoming more and more a case of a regime that is communist, or communistic in nature. It is tyran tyrannous. It is looking to enslave you more and more. And the people that you're up against in the courts or the policemen on the streets, these are the people who are supporting you. And what they're basically saying, or what they're basically positioning themselves as saying, is that, yes, we fully support torture in Guantanamo, we fully support torture in Abu, Abu Ghraib, we fully support these rendition protocols that have been proven to have been passed through Manchester Airport, we publicly accept this, we appreciate it, we tolerate it, and we'll protect it at any cost. So, if you are the type of individual that is happy that there is war, that there is torture, that there is invasion of sovereign uh, states without any mandate from the United Nations or from the public consensus in the UK or the globe at large, if you're happy with that, then allow it to continue. If you're not happy with it, then what I'd suggest is you start going up against these people and pointing out to them that they are supporting the torturers, the murderers, the war criminals, the banksters, the people that steal and rob your money and enslave your children, who provide eugenics, genocide, and big pharma um, mechanisms to ensure that their health deteriorates and their mental and spiritual capabilities deteriorate over time. And apart from that, I don't really have much of an opinion. So, with that in mind, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed these updates. Please, please get this to as many people as possible, and we, together, will hopefully change the future. We must go up against these people, otherwise we are going to be thrown on the heap of history with the likes of everyone else, that every dictator from Stalin through Hitler um, has, ever, uh, 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 has ever been thrown out and suffered the consequence of. So thank you for listening. Don't forget to press the subscribe button for future updates. Thank you.